Just saying hi, everybody. Hope you're all doing super well. Let's see here. I'm going to go into gallery view. There we go. Um, looks like you're all very, very busy, which is what we like to see. I see a lot of black and white paint, but also color. And uh, Tina's working in watercolor, which is always fun to see. And we are taking turns spotlighting you guys, aren't we, Lisa? <laughs> yes, it's so fun. Yeah. I love how you guys are turning, if, if you can, you know, if you turn what you're doing toward the camera, then uh, we can spotlight you and, and some of you aren't able to do that. So don't worry about it. But just know that if, if we can see what you're doing, there's a high likelihood that we will spotlight you at some point during the day. It's just really fun. And I just posted two little videos in the Facebook group. If any of you like want to pop in something into the Facebook group today while you're, you know, painting, take a photo, maybe a, a short little video, uh, share that in the pro Facebook group and people will get to see what they're missing. But, you know, we, we just love it when you guys show up and, uh, we love seeing what you're doing. Mary Knapp, that's awesome what you're doing there. And uh, Carol Mel and Linda Kane and Marie. Oh my goodness, Sue White. We're so happy to see you here, Sue White. Hope you're doing awesome. And uh, yeah, I just kind of, I've got to scroll because I've got so many uh, little thumbnails here, but I'm just trying to take a quick <laughs> here. Um, Barbara's working with color. Sorry, Lisa. And Lindsay's back in her studio. Yay, where's Lindsay? I'm trying to find her. Uh, she's close to the end. I haven't gotten to spotlight her. Yeah, she's excited. I'm going to spotlight her real quick. Oh, I see her for now. a while there, she wasn't. Yeah, she ha she just had her big sheet up and didn't do anything for a while. So I wasn't spotlighting her. And boy, she got busy all of a sudden. <laughs> I love your apron. Are those like bees on there? What are those? Bees? Little like bumblebees? You're muted. You're muted, Lindsay. You're, uh, you have to unmute. Yeah. Right. I'm picking on you because I want to see your apron. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Lindsay. We're picking on you. Yeah, it's one of those crossback. Oh. And it's got a little flower design on it, I think. Oh, cool. And uh, okay. I, I love to paint. paint. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. I love the, the design where it's so loose you can move around, you know, it's not constricting you. Yeah, and... they're great. For the big pockets, <laughs> they're great. Yeah. That wall you have behind your work there, Lindsay, that wall is to die for. That, that wall should be framed. Oh, it's the only place. I'm happy because it's the only place I can throw paint around with abandon and just dump my pots on the floor and just scatter everything around and not worry about it till another time. I mean, I was, if we I was even say after, but another time. I don't if even worry about just, it after. You know, if we could all just do that, have either a sheet of paper or a little section of our wall where we did just what you've done. It would probably be the best I thing. Think so <laughs> yeah. I think it's so important. I think it's so important to have that. Um, the other side of my studio isn't like this, and it's quite normal. <laughs> I have a table and uh, these things upon the wall and a notice board and so on. Whoa. But this side is pure chaos. That's what we love. And uh, I like it that way. Yeah. And you. you can see, test, test out my spray cans on the wall before I use them just, just to make sure they're spraying okay. <laughs> right. Better, better <laughs> on your wall. at all. Good for you. Yeah, I don't worry about it at all. So, okay. thank you, Lindsay. If anyone else wants to raise their hand, uh, or we'll go back to you. Uh, Mary Knapp has her hand raised. I do. I do. Yes, have, I'm unmuted. Yeah, okay. but your camera's. On. That's okay though. If you want to, if you want to. Yeah. Just no, I just. It doesn't matter. My camera's off, but um. I just want to tell you how fun this obliter obliterating is uh, to a piece that has such bold lines. Thank you. Yeah, <laughs> that looks great. Step back. Oh. We want to see it all. Oh, well, I'm so expressive. Ooh. I mean, you just can't <laughs> keep that, you guys. Um, anyone looking at this feels so the hand. They feel the artist. That is so cool. Wow. I love it. I love it. I love it. Yes. Thank we you. Love it. We love it. <laughs> Thanks for showing that. Wow. <laughs> How fun. We've got more okay, people. It looks like, yeah, yeah, Lynn has her hand up. Lynn, do you want to unmute? This is off topic, but I got this book. I thought somebody might be interested. It's really quite wonderful. Huh. Yes. We share things that we buy outside. The, yes. The book. Of course. This is really a wonderful book. Yeah, kinds of fun 
Oh, nice. Anyway. Thank you. Thank you. The Zen of creative painting, everybody. Yes, we can look that up. Thanks for sharing that, Lynn. Um, I have a question about the obliterate. I love what yeah. you just showed, right. um, but I get confused on, I mean, this is just one way to do it, right? Sometimes right. you just take it and write it all out. Oh, yeah. Well, you know, it's, yeah. uh, it's again, it's like, you could just kind of put it under the category of process. Do you like this process? But it also like, okay, this was started as an exercise, but let's say that where you are right now, you're like, wow, I really like what's happening here. There's no reason why an exercise can't turn into a finished, amazing piece. So um, now how much you obliterate is up to you. Uh, you've obliterated it all. And so did I, but you know, maybe another uh, variation would be I, I obliterate part of it and not all of it. Um, so yeah. Right. And it could just be random. I'm, um, right. I mean, it can just be random, right? Like for instance, this is the one from, oh, which was it? Number two. I mean, I've got this covered up here, but we started out just automatic and then started. Oh, yeah. I forget which one that was maybe two or something. Um, but I was just randomly wiping out, you know, and then today I thought, oh, this is cool, you know, yeah. but, um, you know, I'm just trying to learn uh, well, what the words you know, mean and how to apply it. Right. And great questions. Um, it is going to be kind of hard as we get more and more of these exercises from the Expressive Drawing Group book to kind of keep it all straight. But keep in mind that uh, based on what Stephen Imoni, like the little tidbit he gave us, a little kind of hint he gave us was that the top three exercises are kind of like, to me, automatic drawing, number one, assert and obliterate, which is what you just did, right? You've obliterated it all. And you just said to yourself, hey, I, I might obliterate part of it next time. The third one is a circle, triangle, square, because they're all, all three of those are so uh, they give you a sense of freedom. They build your confidence. They help you to get rid of that blank staring piece of paper or, you know, panel, a great way to start. And who knows what it's going to lead to? Like your piece right now looks like the alphabet to me. Like I'm starting to see all these letters, <laughs> um, but yeah, what yeah. you, you know, what you want to do, like you, for instance, you could take what you've got there and you could launch off into automatic drawing, you know? You could do an automatic drawing over this, uh, or you can go now the next, like the next thing that I've done in the past, and this is just why I uh, obliterated everything because in the past, what I did was wherever I put white paint, I then now covered it with black again. And, you know, again, you could do that in part, you could do that all, but I'm introducing a third variation to my own process, which is I know I started with gessoed canvas I put on black and the black was covered with white, but I still have bare canvas. So everywhere I have bare canvas, I'm gonna come in with black. And what'll happen is I'm essentially gonna make these white shapes that are over black shapes pop forward because now I've got all these black little shapes that are kind of weird. And you could do the same if you wanted to, but that's what I'm gonna do next. I'm following along. <laughs> okay. We're having fun together. I'm doing it. You're doing it. I'm doing it. Okay. I'm so glad you are. It's just really great that you guys are getting into the exercises and I hope you, you know, feel kind of a sense of um fun and uh mm -hmm. excitement. Like to me, I to me there's nothing more excitement than uh going from something you actually like, those bold black marks, like I really liked them. But then when I covered them, I was like, but I like this too. And, and there's no regrets. And often when we paint, we have precious areas and we're like, oh no, I can't cover it up. That's what this assert and obliterate is so good for is saying like, you know what? I've lost it. So what? You can always put it back. You'll find something else that you love. Um, I think that this, again, the sense of loss uh, in life is so hard and there's not a day that goes by that we probably don't feel that in some way. When we lose things in our art, I think it helps us to deal with loss. I, I personally feel that way. And so that's why I think the Assert and Obliterate is a lifetime must do thing. We, 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 we must do it until we feel like, you know, um,
Well, what I wanted to say was I had like if I'm watching art videos and this year I've been trying to experiment more because, you know, I'm basically I've never painted with people in the room with me very much. Teachers or anyone. I've always had like you like this. Uh, so I thought well, I'm going to really experiment because I just seem to be painting. You know, I have this way I do it. So I thought I'm going to do more expressive, you know, Joan Mitchell type stuff. So when I start that stuff, I, I it always makes me stressed out. And I thought it was because I couldn't do it. And now I'm thinking maybe it's so chaotic. It stresses me out. And one thing is like that, um, the obliteration. That somehow obliteration, I do it. And then I think that doesn't look good, but I've not been doing it like you just did it more you're you know you're obliterating you're not making a mess doing it you're like you went over the black with the white and i love that because i'm also a geometric very mm -hmm. shape oriented geometric person so yeah. i wanted to say thank you because you gave me some hope <laughs> oh yeah and you right. the thicker like i noticed you've got a lot of thin lines but you know uh, i what i did this morning when i did the black was i started out with a brush then I, I quickly put paint on my gloved hand and I started using my hand because I wanted a bigger mark. And the bigger your your, yeah. your lines are, the, the easier it is to obliterate them. If they're super thin, it's a lot harder. Yeah. Okay. I, well, I've, I have found, it's like you start trying to obliterate it and then you just lose everything. So it's kind of. Well, the other thing that's. Well, thank you. I'm going to try this. Yeah. A couple things too, Sue, is that. Number one, uh, so you don't get a mess, you gotta really make sure that first, whatever color it is, whether it's black or red or whatever it is, it's really dry, gotta make sure it's dry. And, and okay. then, you know, when you obliterate it, um, like I, I was really amazed how quickly I obliterated it. And I'm sure everybody else experienced that too. Like you kind of feel like uh, most of these things should take so much time. It's a four by eight foot canvas. But I did it in like five minutes. It's like, whoa, I just like obliterated it. I, it was shocking. Yeah, I know. I'm watching you do it, I'm thinking, she's going so quickly with that. It just went really fast. And then when you think about how many times you can do that process, like I could go right into black again and say, okay, I've got a blank canvas. I've, this is my blank canvas. Yeah. I'm going to start with my black shapes again, let it dry. And go right back in and do the white thing again. Can you imagine how rich your surface is going to get? Oh, wow. Yeah. And yeah. then, and then imagine clarify. Oh, I got to find just a few little areas to, you know, to tweak. And you've got a, an amazing a abstract expressionist. Yes. So I, I mean, that looks good. I'm looking at your painting right now. It looks great just with what you've done. Sure. And just when you start doing the rest of it, layers and such, it's going to be wonderful. And you know, you guys, once you get this with black and white, imagine you can do this with color. You, you can keep changing yeah. your palette. Like, you know, like if you start with crazy colors, like, you know, let's say you do uh, blue, red, and green or whatever. And then you overlap that with orange, purple, and uh, red. And then you go back to the original thing. You keep going back and forth and back and forth. You're gonna deal with a lot of lack of harmony, but you know how to make harmony now. So yeah. is there ever an end to like what you can do? No. <laughs> so exciting. Well, thank you. Thank you, Sue. I just want well, have to show you a little bit just what, what it looks like inside because they're oh, absolutely man. phenomenal. Oh, man. Yeah. Oh, wow. Mm. Oh. Okay. Show me the cover again. I want to see how you spell his name. It's H-A-E-V-K-E-L. And you what can just put his name in and Google images and you'll see a lot of them. These are all living uh, wow. creatures. I see. So he was, he drew. was he an illustrator then by trade? Yeah. Think? Okay. Yeah. A scientist and an illustrator. I mean, wow. they are really just, here's bats. Oh, wow. Isn't that amazing? <sighs> wow. I you know, mean, they're absolutely astonishing so yeah that that thing i drew was actually from let me see if i can oh here look it's yeah. this one right here oh wow yeah. 
Wow. You were, you were not kidding. It's a coffee cup on top of something really extraordinary. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I mean, you could just like basically spend your whole life playing with this stuff, you know. Okay. Hold that book up again, the front cover. Okay. It's called the book is called Art Forms in Nature. Oh, okay. Oh. And what is it's Ernst, Ernst Heckel. Just uh, put his name in and Google because I used to just get him off the internet, you know, especially these. Um, so like, look at these like mandalas almost. Yes, they oh, are. They're... Isn't nature amazing when you when you have a oh. scientist like this has bringing our attention to to so many things that are in nature that most of us never see like diatoms, which are in the microscopic world, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. Thank you. Uh, in answer to your question, you. Jillian, I think it's up to you. I don't think there's only a one or, you know, one or one way to do it. I think if you're working color though, my, you could use white, but I would look at like, what is around your color? Um, is it just one color on white or is it like red against orange? If it were red against orange, I would say, well, cover your red with orange and put, make your orange red. Uh, <clears throat> the concept is that, you know, we're working in black and white. So the concept is whatever is black goes white, whatever is white goes black. Um, so if you've got a two color thing going on, two colors you love, or maybe one color you love and one color you're like, I don't like this color. You could, um, you could play with that kind of relationship. Or if you have three colors, I don't think there's one way to do it. I really think that uh, you should do what, what most makes you excited to see what will happen. It's like, you know, that, that, what if I do this, like ask yourself that question and then whatever makes you the most excited, that's what you should do. So it's not, there's no, you know, even in a book, if, if you see an exercise, including all these ED exercises, if there's something that we talk about and you're like, yeah, but what if I do this instead, do that. The whole idea here is to get excited. And if you're not excited by what we're doing, uh, give us some thought and like, well, but what if I do this? Yeah, what if you do that? And then show us what you're doing so that we can get excited with you. <laughs> so, okay. Yeah.